Runway just released Motion Brush, and if you've ever wanted more precise control over image to video animation, you're probably just as intrigued as I am. We're gonna see if it'll help me fix an image to video problem I had before Motion Brush existed. We'll try Motion Brush and a text prompt. We'll combine Motion Brush and a camera movement, and we'll look at an example where sometimes you might just wanna start with image to video and only use Motion Brush if you need more precise control. And there'll be a few more things, but let's get started. If you log in, you can just go here to Gen 2. And here we see Motion Brush Beta. I'm gonna go into Image here. So I did a tutorial a few months ago, and one of the things that bugged me about this video is that her hair was moving, she was moving, but I just wanted the scenery outside the bus window to be moving. So now I think I should be able to do that. Let's try that. So I'll tap here. So I'll just take this brush, this brush comes here. It looks like I can change the direction of the video as I'm going through. So let's just, um, I'm just gonna draw this window here. I try to not do this because it's her hair and I'll make her hair move. Let's see, can I adjust the size of the, is that the size? No, that's proximity. Oh, that, so that must be how much it affects the things around it. So I want it to be really, I just want it to be this stuff, right? And then let's have the motion go horizontal. Well, let's just let's stick with the defaults and see what happens. All right, let's click save. So it should just be the the only the windows should have motion there. Let's generate that. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how this goes. All right, this is super impressive because you get the sunlight here. It changes on her face because the sun is changing on her face. She blinks a little bit. This is totally the shot that I wanted to do a few months ago that I couldn't do and now I can do it. This is very cool. I'm already impressed based on one video. All right, let's stay on public transportation, but we're gonna do something a little bit different here. I wanna have two different versions of this. So on one, I want the aliens to be the ones that are in motion and the woman is sitting there absolutely still. And in the other one, I want the woman to be reacting to the aliens that are absolutely still. So I'm able to do that, I think, with this motion brush. So let's go here. I'm going to click in. Let's just start with her. So we're just going to make her move. And I'm probably doing too much. I probably just want to do just her upper body, but that's okay. Let's see how it does. So it's just her. All right. And then, because I don't really want to go up or down. Like I don't want camera movement. I just want her moving, right? All right. So then I'll click save um, and go. Okay. While well, that one's going... I'm gonna try again. So I, it it's keeps the same image down here, which is cool. And I wanna do a new one. So I'm gonna click this and now I'm gonna clear it. And now I want these people. I just want the, let's just do just the face here and just the hands. And then the same thing here, just the hands um, and just the face. Maybe for this one, let's do a little bit more of the shoulders. There could be some like uncomfortable um, moving around maybe. And then we'll kind of compare if it's this one, just the head and the hands and is this one, the whole body. And then she shouldn't be moving at all. And then we'll just change the proximity a little bit and click save. All right. So we've got two different ones going now. All right. Here's the first one. So interesting that the people in the background are moving. This person's moving a little bit. She's not really moving a lot. And it maybe it's just because her posture doesn't have a lot of movement in it, but it doesn't look like she's doing much. Her hair is moving a little bit. All right, here's the one where I motion brushed the aliens. They're moving a little, I guess. The brush only lets us choose horizontal or vertical motion. So maybe we need to use text prompting to get the motion that isn't directional. Let's give it a shot. All right, we're gonna motion brush her. And then let's have her kind of look that way. Maybe that's what she'll do. So we'll just do her. We'll say the woman turns her head to look out the window and we'll generate. All right, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, this is, see, this is what I wanted. This to me is the best example of the brush. I think a lot of people can relate to this. I, I didn't get her newspaper. I missed that. But like where you just want one thing to happen in the frame and you just want to be able to say she's moving away from them or she's moving toward them. You have that control now. 
This is really cool. I think this gives creators a lot more control. You're able to generate an image that you want and you have so much more control over it than just using word prompts. You can actually paint on there and say, this is it, this is what she should be doing. And to me, it works great. All right, let's try this. This is just a sci-fi image I did in I think Dolly. Um, let's say we just want this thing to be flaming electricity or whatever. It looks like it might do something there too. Let's just have that go. What do we want? I think we want the direction to go vertical. Let's, let's make it go up a little bit. I'm imagining that it's making the electricity go up. So we'll have it just go up a little bit. Oh wait, I see. Oh, I see. If I go this way, then it goes down. So there's like this zero here. Um, so you can slide it or you can hit this. If I go up, it's like just resets it. Let's just have it go up a little bit and keep the proximity there. Let's have it go up a little bit more, maybe like three. And then we'll click save and then we'll click generate. All right, let's see how this sword goes. Nice. Added some little extra things there too. The other thing that we can do is we can combine this with a camera motion. I think it keeps the motion brush. Yeah, so here it's a little still in purple here. So we still have our motion brush, same thing there. And then we'll do the camera motion and we'll just zoom out a little bit and click save. And then, so we've got our camera motion zoom out and we've got our painted motion zoom up like this. And let's click generate. Now you will notice there, there are some things, I, I feel like the proximity, I should have changed. Let's see, what is the proximity setting? So the proximity is zero on this. So. Um, it's still picking up some little bits of red there and animating them, as you can see. Um, so I'm not sure why it's doing that if the proximity is low. Maybe it, you have to really drag the proximity down. Well, let's try it. So let's say proximity. Let's, let's just drag that down to like 10 and save and see what happens there. So we reduce the proximity here. Hopefully only the sword and the camera move, movement is there. So let's see how this one turned out. Oh, that's cool, huh? A little bit different sword, like it didn't keep, oh, there's fire there though, that's smart. Very contextual, like yeah, there's probably fire in this scene, so it adds fire. So I definitely like this sword more, like it would have been nice if it could have just kept this animation on the zoom out, but still very cool that you get to keep that kind of motion. All right, and here's our third one. Let's check out this guy. Better sword. I liked the fire last time. So the second one is probably my favorite because as much as I don't like how it turns into like a lightsaber there, his whole hand movement and the little fire, that's kind of nice. But if you were just looking for this, like this is like a cool effect. For this motion brush one, I want to try this thing like where, uh, let's do this waterfall, right? Let's do this waterfall. Now I'm wondering if it's just going to know like, hey, there's waterfalls here. Um, Let's see. So let's have the vertical go down because waterfalls go down, right? And the proximity, I'm going to, I don't know, let's keep it here. I, I wonder if the proximity knows this stuff or if it's just related to what is adjacent to this mask. So I don't know if this will answer that question, but let's see. All right, let's check out these waterfalls. Yeah, I did all of them. That's very nice. And I was, whoa, a lot of extra splash there. But even this one down here, which I hadn't masked out, it knows like this is a waterfall. So just out of curiosity with what, this one, let's not do the motion brush. There's no camera movement, All right? So no camera movement, no motion brush, same image. Let's see how it compares. All right, this is the one with no, God, that's actually a pretty, pretty awesome shot too. I actually like that one better if I'm being totally honest. Amazing, runway, nice. Maybe you don't always need motion brush. Maybe you can just stick with regular image to video first and then use motion brush if you need it. All right, so I did this, um, these like little fireplace scenes with some mythical creatures. I had to do a lot of this masking in a video editor um, because I wanted just this fire to move and nothing else. Um, so let's see how this works. Um, let's have, the, uh, have it go up because it's fire. So we want it to go up and proximity will bring it down. We'll save and oh, let's try this. The fire crackles in the fireplace. 
Like it should figure that out, right? right so here's our fire crackling. I don't know, that flame, I've seen better flames and it kind of dimmed it, I think because it's trying to react to the fire. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'd still have to do it the old way. All right, go have fun with motion brush and remember, make things weird. They don't always have to be like beautiful and perfect and pretty. Go make weird things that you can only do with generative AI.